Welcome to St John's Gate, home to the Museum of the Order of St John. The museum tells the story of St John, our story, which goes back almost a thousand years. The Order of St John are a group of people who spend their lives caring for and protecting sick people. Today, they do this through the work of St John Ambulance. Here at the museum, there are more than 60,000 objects from battle armour and ancient books to first aid kits and wartime stretchers. And using just some of these treasures, we are going to tell you everything you need to know about our charity's history. The Order of St John built its first hospital in Jerusalem in 1080. The monks who worked in the hospital were led by Gerard, the man in this picture with a halo around his head. Gerard was one of many Christian monks at the hospital who cared for all travellers who had become sick on their journey to the special city of Jerusalem. Can you make out the important symbol on Gerard's robes? We're still wearing it now almost a thousand years later. In 1099, lots of battles known as the Crusades began. Christians and Muslims fought each other for control of Jerusalem and the land around it. With ferocious battles taking place all around them, the Order of St. John decided that although they would still care for the sick, some of its members also needed to fight and protect the hospital. These defenders became known as the Knights of St. John. They wore male armour, which was made by hand from thousands of small metal rings. Many wealthy families gave gifts of money and land to the Order of St. John to help support its work with the poor and sick. The order used some of the land it was given to build a large priory church in London. The church was beautifully painted and had the floor covered in decorative tiles like this one with a little goblin. This priory became the order's English headquarters and is where the museum and St John Ambulance's national headquarters are today. The Christian Crusaders didn't keep their new kingdom for very long and when the last part of it was captured, the order of St John was forced to retreat to islands in the Mediterranean Sea sailing on ships that looked a little bit like this. At first, the order retreated to its lands in Cyprus, but before long, it had set up a new permanent headquarters on Rhodes. In 1522, the order's home on Rhodes was attacked and the knights were defeated. The order was forced to retreat again to the island of Malta, where it stayed until Napoleon Bonaparte, the French leader, invaded. Wherever the order moved, it built great hospitals and cared for the sick as well as using its ships to protect the boats that were taking silks and spices back to Europe. Things were also going badly for the Order in London and the prior, William Weston. King Henry VIII had been a great supporter of the Order. However, when the Pope refused to let him get divorced, he started his own church, the Church of England, and put himself in charge. People were no longer allowed to follow the Catholic religion in England, and so, the Order's Priory in London was closed. It is said that the Prior of the Order's Church in London, William Weston, died of a broken heart when he was told the Priory would close. The 1800s were a time of great change in Britain. Industrialisation brought about the growth of towns and factories and the building of lots of railways. These were all very dangerous places to work and many people suffered serious injuries some good-hearted Victorians decided to restart the English Order of St John and care for the sick and poor once more. In 1877, they established the St John Ambulance Association to teach people first aid and save lives. This book, First Aid to the Injured, is an early version of the first aid manual we use today, although I don't imagine that compressions to the back were very effective in CPR. In 1887, the English Order of St John decided that they needed to do even more to help. And so, they formed the St John Ambulance Brigade. The job of the brigade was to provide first aid ambulance and nursing services for the general public. This was really important as the National Health Service did not exist until 1948. Queen Victoria was so impressed by the work of the Order of St John that in 1888, she made it a Royal Order of Chivalry adding her royal beasts, the lions and unicorns, to the Order's eight-pointed cross. This book, The Roll of Honour, lists 1,077 St John men and women who lost their lives during the First World War. 
Together with the British Red Cross, St John made sure that there was medical help for the millions of wounded soldiers on the battlefields, as well as continuing to care for those at home. St John were extremely important in World War II. Working alongside the British Red Cross, they sent over 20 million food parcels to prisoners of war, as well as helping in hospitals and teaching first aid. During the World Wars, there was a lot of teenagers like me who wanted a chance to help those in need. In 1922, St John formed the cadets, giving us the opportunity to get involved with the charity's life-saving work. Badgers are the charity's youngest volunteers. We came along a little bit later in 1987 to celebrate the 100th birthday of St John Ambulance. One day, the uniforms we wear now may be on display in this museum because we're all part of St John's incredible story. Today, the Order of St John provides first aid and healthcare in over 40 countries around the world. We make sure that first aid kits like this are available for those who are injured or unwell and that there are people like us who know how to use them. For you, our travels through time is now finished. We followed the story of St John for almost a thousand years and discovered how its symbol, a white eight-pointed cross on our black background, is still an international symbol of first aid. Thanks for listening and now the journey continues with you.